Okay, so today I'll be explaining about uh, direct ophthalmoscope and uh, its uses and how do we do it. So this is a direct ophthalmoscope. Um, it has the important parts that you are to know is this is the on off button. You press this green button and twist it and the light comes on. Then you have some knobs here which change the aperture size and then you have a green filter. This dial here again changes the aperture size and you have the cobalt blue filter on this and there's a dial to the side which uh, gives you the power of the lens through which you see. So if, if, the, if you as a doctor has a refractive error and you don't want to use your specs you can adjust the power of the lens on that. If the patient has a refractive error again you can adjust it on that. So uh, you can read off the readings of uh, the lens on plus and minus direction on this uh, direct ophthalmoscope. So the direct ophthalmoscope's main use is to see the uh, fundus or the retina. Uh, as another use, preliminary use, you can also use the same instrument for a distant direct ophthalmoscopy. You don't see the retina with that, but you can uh, evaluate the clarity of the optical media through a distant direct ophthalmoscopy. So I will demonstrate the procedure uh, one by one. So the f uh, first I'll demonstrate distant direct ophthalmoscopy, which as I told you is to evaluate the clarity of the optical media. So you hold the direct ophthalmoscope one meter away from the patient, look through the lens and shine the light into the patient's pupil. So if the visual media or the optical media is clear, you get a red reflex coming from the choroid and retina. So you do it for one eye and then you do it for the other eye. If there is any media opacity, like a corneal opacity, a cataract, a vitreous hemorrhage, the red glow will be impaired depending upon the density of the media. Now I'll be demonstrating how to do direct ophthalmoscopy. So direct ophthalmos for direct ophthalmoscopy, you have to go really close to the patient's pupil and peep through the pupil so that you get a view of the retina. So for the patient's right eye, you hold the ophthalmoscope in your right hand and use your right eye and uh, vice versa for the left eye. It is a uniocular examination. So now I'll be looking at the patient's right eye. I ask the patient to look straight ahead at a far distance so that the pupils are dilated maximally and uh, accommodation is relaxed. And then I go close and peep through the pupil to have a view of the retina. I adjust the lens to get a clear view of a blood vessel. Then I trace that blood vessel to the optic disc. I look at the optic disc in detail. Then follow the other retinal vessels in different directions. So I move my head in different directions. to view different parts of the retina and then finally I will have a look at the macula which is temporal to the optic disc. The other way you can bring the macula into focus is by asking the patient to look directly into the light. And a light load no kamo? Yes. So this is the most uncomfortable part of the examination so you reserve it for the end. I will just show you how the Left eye is also examined. You switch the ophthalmoscope to the left hand and use your left eye. You close your right eye in order to do the examination. Go close, tilt your head, peep through the pupil, identify one blood vessel. If it is not in focus, you turn this dial so that the, uh, the object that you're viewing is brought into focus adjusting for the refractive error that the patient has or you have. And then once you see that blood vessel, trace it back to the optic disc, evaluate the optic disc in detail. From the optic disc, trace all blood vessels in different directions as much as you can. 
look at the retinal background and look at the macula right at the end. So I'll demonstrate it once more for the left eye. Ask the patient to look at a far distance. I'm switching the ophthalmoscope on, keeping the power of the ophthalmoscope at zero to begin with. I can place my hand on the patient's shoulder. If I want, I can uh, stretch my finger so that my ophthalmoscope doesn't hit the patient. And then I go close, peep in through the pupil. If it is focused well, I don't have to change this dial. If not, I focus it. And that's, that's how a direct ophthalmoscopy is done.